Hey, this is Presh Hallwalker. In 2019, Singapore had an exam that was so difficult that parents took issue with it because some students were left in literal tears. The paper was for year six students who were approximately 11 to 12 years old. I thank Vishal for this suggestion. So here's one of the difficult problems. We have a pattern shown with four different figures of triangles. You are given a table which shows the figures one through four and the number of white triangles and gray triangles in each figure. This is a three-part question. Part A, complete the table for figure five. Part B, find the total number of triangles in figure 250. Part C, find the percentage of gray triangles in figure 250. So how can we solve this problem? It looks intimidating, but let's go through it step by step. So let's try to complete the table for figure five. We need to calculate the number of white triangles and gray triangles. We could just draw out this figure, but let's look for a pattern. Going from figure one to figure two, notice the number of white triangles is the same. So we have a pattern where the number of white triangles going from one to two is exactly equal to each other. Now what happens when we go from figure two to three? The number of gray triangles is exactly the same. So we see that this row, the number of gray triangles is the same. When we go from three to four, we see the number of white triangles will be the same. So what does that mean for figure five? It means the number of gray triangles is going to be the same. So we can calculate the number of gray triangles in figure five. We just copy over this number 10 and we have figured out this entry. Now, how do we get the number of white triangles? Let's look for a pattern in the difference of the number of triangles. In figure one, there is one more white triangle than gray triangles. In figure two, the difference is two, but there are more gray triangles. In figure three, the difference is three, and there are more white triangles. In figure four, the difference is four, but the difference flips, there are more gray triangles here. So continuing this pattern, in figure five, the difference will be five and it will flip, so there are more white triangles. So 10 plus five is equal to 15. So we have completed the table for figure five, and that's part A. Let's now solve part B. Find the total number of triangles for figure 250. It will be helpful to add another row to the table which has the total number of triangles. This is the sum of the white and gray triangles. So in figure one, we have one plus zero, which equals one. In figure two, one plus three is equal to four. In figure three, six plus three equals nine. In figure four, six plus 10 equals 16. And in figure five, 15 plus 10 equals 25. We can now see a pattern in the total number of triangles. These are all square numbers. One is equal to one squared, four is equal to two squared, nine is equal to three squared, 16 is equal to four squared, and 25 is equal to five squared. So the total number of triangles for figure 250 will exactly be equal to the square of 250. So let's create a small table for this. Figure 250 will have a total number of triangles equal to the square of 250, and that is equal to 62,500. Let's now solve the hardest part of the question, which is part C. Find the percentage of gray triangles in figure 250. The percentage of gray triangles will be equal to the number of gray triangles divided by the total number of triangles. We have already calculated the total number of triangles, so it only remains to calculate the number of gray triangles. Let's go back to a pattern we found earlier. We calculated the difference between the white and gray triangles in each figure. We saw that this difference exactly matched the figure number. In figure one, the difference was one, in figure two it was two, and so on, where the absolute difference is equal to the figure number. So in figure 250, the absolute difference between the number of white and gray triangles will be equal to 250. But are there more white triangles or gray triangles? This flips each time we increase the figure number. But there's a pattern. In all of the odd numbered figures, we see 
that the number of white triangles is more. And in all of the even number figures, we see the number of gray triangles is more. Now, 250 is an even number. So there will be more gray triangles than white triangles. So the arrow is pointing downward towards gray triangles. So we just need to do the calculation. Suppose the number of white triangles is some unit u. Then the number of gray triangles will be 250 more than that, which is u plus 250. We know the number of white triangles plus the number of gray triangles is equal to the total number of triangles. So u plus u plus 250 is equal to 62,500. This means that 2u plus 250 equals 62,500. 2u is equal to 62,500 minus 250. Then we just take that calculation and divide by 2, and we get that u is equal to 62,250 divided by 2, which equals 31,125. The number of gray triangles is u plus 250, which equals 31,375. The percentage of gray triangles is equal to the number of gray triangles divided by the total number of triangles, which equals 31,375 divided by 62,500, which is equal to 50.2%. And that's the answer. Now, of course, this problem could be solved in multiple ways. The solution I have just presented resembles what students in Singapore were expected to present on the test. But I will mention that is not how I solve the problem. So in the spirit of being more comprehensive, I want to share how I approach this question. I looked at figure one and I thought about it as the number one. I then looked at the figure two and I thought about it as one white triangle plus three gray triangles. We have one number for each row. Now let's look at figure three we have three rows, and this will be one plus three plus five. Figure four will have four rows, and counting the number of triangles in each row, we have one plus three plus five plus seven. Now seeing the sum of the first n odd numbers, my mind immediately raced to the fact that this sum is equal to n squared. There's a wonderful visualization of this fact. It's much easier to see with squares. Start out with one square. Now let's see what happens when we add three squares around the border. We end up with a two by two square. From this square, let's see what happens when we add five squares around the border. We end up with a three by three square. From this square, if we add seven squares around the border, we end up with a four by four square. So the sum of the first n odd numbers is equal to n squared. Now, how many triangles are in the bottom row? Or what's the largest number in this sum? Now, in figure one, we have one, which is equal to two multiplied by one minus one. In figure two, the largest number is three, and three is equal to two times two minus one. Then we have five, which is equal to two times three minus one, and seven is equal to two times four minus one. The nth odd number is equal to two multiplied by n minus one. So in figure 250, we have two multiplied by 250 minus one, which gives us 500 minus one, which equals 499. So the sum will go from one to 499. But will the last row be white triangles or gray triangles? Well, in even number figures, we will have the last row being gray triangles. So in figure 250, we know that there are 499 gray triangles in the very bottom row. So we have the sum that goes from one to 499, and we know that 499 will be shaded in blue because this will be a set of gray triangles. This sum gives us the total number of triangles in figure 250, and this is equal to 250 squared, which equals 62,500. We now need to calculate the total number of gray triangles, but the blue numbers represent the number of gray triangles. So all that remains is to calculate the sum of the blue numbers. So we wanna calculate three plus seven plus dot 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 plus 499. 
Notice this is an arithmetic series with a common difference of four. How many terms are in this series? Well, in figure 250, we have 250 rows, which equals 250 terms. Each term is representing the number of triangles in a particular row. The number of gray triangles will be every other row. So we need to take one half of 250, which equals 125 terms. The sum of an arithmetic series has a formula. We take n over 2 multiplied by the sum of the first and last terms. So we have 125 over 2 multiplied by the sum of 3 and 499, and this gives us 31,375. We can then calculate the percentage of gray triangles, which equals 31,375 divided by 62,500, which equals 50.2%. And that's another way you could solve this problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.